Too often, the road to opioid addiction starts in the emergency room. For years, opioids were doctors' often first line of defense. Thankfully now, the culture is beginning to change. Broken bones, kidney stones, muscle spasms, painful ailments that could land you in the emergency room with an opioid prescription, until now. St. Joseph University Medical Center is breaking away from this standard practice that has contributed to the opioid crisis in America. It's called the Alternatives to Opiates Program, and their first year has led to a 58% drop in their emergency department's opioid prescriptions. The simple techniques are not addictive and effective. The question is, with over 6,000 ERs around the country, how can we get more hospitals on board? So if they're not using opioids, what are they using? Are patients in more pain? Well, the medical director of this program at St. Joseph's University Medical Center, Dr. Alexis LaPietra, joins us to answer that. Doc, before we start, I just want to applaud you and your emergency department. When I read about you all doing this, I'm just so proud of you for, for leading the way in pain management that doesn't always use opioids. Tell us a little bit about the unique techniques that you're using, because they're really cool. In the ER, we are really the front door of the hospital. And during this opioid crisis, my chairman, Dr. Mark Rosenberg, and I decided we really need to come up with a solution. And when we started looking at some evidence, we found there's a variety of alternatives that are as effective as opioids, and we should be using them in the emergency department. So when we have a patient with kidney stones, we actually use lidocaine, which some people may have heard of when they go to the dentist, but we're able to give it through the IV. It's actually been shown to be as effective, if not a little better, than morphine. Musculoskeletal back pain, we combine medications, Motrin and Tylenol. We use topical medications like creams or patches, and we even do a dry needling or trigger point injection procedure. We use the ultrasound machine to look at nerves and put some numbing medication around those nerves to get rid of that fracture pain. And for headaches, we can even give a little bit of nasal spray or certain injections, and they work just as well as the opioids, and patients feel much better without exposing them. Them, and really, really quickly, Doc, we've known for a long time that opioids, let's say with musculoskeletal pain like back pain, they may mask the pain temporarily, but they don't treat it. Something like dry needling, you're actually treating the pain so that when patients go home, they don't need repeat doses of, of things. Talk to us about, for instance, with dry needling, what you're doing with that. So dry needling is part of a larger procedure that we're doing in the emergency department called trigger point injection. And you're exactly right. We need to get patients immediate relief and effective relief if we can do so in the emergency department. So when we have a patient with a very tight focal area of muscle pain, we put a small needle into that area. We do a dry needling, which is moving that needle in and out, inactivating that spasm and we inject a little bit of numbing medication afterwards to soothe that pain away. It is immediate, it is so effective, and patients then go home with nothing, and they can get back to their acti activities of daily living without any exposure to those addictive medications. This is really exciting. This is almost a whole new specialty that's evolving. I mean, do you have an algorithm like for this condition, you're going to try this, this, and that, or? Yes, we do. So we. We call them the ALTO protocols, the program alternatives to opioids is called ALTO. So we have our five conditions and underneath them we list for the docs what they can choose from or if they can use all of them. We leave it up to the discretion of the treating physician, but slowly the doctors started adopting these protocols and seeing that they really work. And that makes buy-in really easy and the patients start hearing about it from friends and family and we actually have kids you know, young adults being brought in by their parents because we have protocolized non-addictive ways to manage pain and adolescents and young adults are at a significant risk for addiction and that is a group we want to really keep out of that addiction problem and we have a great way to do that. I want to point out that you are talking about significant amounts of pain. You're not talking about nicks and cuts. When you say kidney stones, whenever I see a woman and she says I'm having uterine contractions, she'll say the only time I've experienced this type of pain is when I had kidney stones. So this is really significant and I love that you are changing the culture in your community and if we want to see changes across the yeah. nation, we're all going to have to have those types of conversations. You're doing fabulous work. Yes. Yeah, keep it up.
Things are changing. Yeah. You all are leading the way. I hope no, we see yeah. a change across the country. And we're seeing one in 48 people. If you go in and you get an opiate prescription, so of every 48 people who got an acute opiate prescription, one of those became chronically on opiates. And that number is way too high. Um, I think there's a lot to learn from this.